Hey everybody. In this video I'm going to be opening up this power supply here. This is a really, really, really cheap power supply that came in a recent parts computer. But the parts computer itself running just fine after some after putting in a new processor that wasn't existing in the machine before. And some extra memory in a hard drive and a DVD drive. You can probably hear it running in the background. There it is. But anyway, let's go and open up this power supply here. Now I pulled this power supply out and then um, flipped it up. I noticed something fell out. And it looked like something burnt. So, <laughs> curious to see here. Now of course, when I get part systems with cheap power supplies that I don't know the history of, I never test these systems with the power with the cheap power supply. Now some of you guys may have recently seen videos regarding a Chief Max Microatex supply I bought. And saying oh, it's a piece of crap. I mean it, it ain't all that great, but um after the fixes I've done to it which involved improving the EMI filtering and recapping the secondary, it's a lot better than it was before. In which here we have a quality control sticker, so it makes this thing thoroughly past quality control. It surely can put out 400 watts, no problem. <laughs> right. And this is one of those units that they cheaped out so badly that they can't even put four screws in the fan. <laughs> this is one of those units. And it looks like it was something from Chief Max. I mean, there's some Chief Max units that are fixable, like the one I got from TV Box. But there are also some that are just so crappy that you just won't, won't even get near them. Oh, I got another warranty sticker here. And scratch that. Power supply was made in June 2010. So this little guy here is four years old. And there's another power supply that I have that was made close to that time period. <laughs> Here's the Diablo Tech that was in the TV box. Yeah, guys, look at this. Now, you tell me. How can it be possible for something that small to have those kinds of ratings? I mean, seriously. Look at this thing. <laughs> look at it. I mean, this here is a piece of crap. I mean, I think I may see what it burnt. Well, I can tell it did get quite hot because I mean look at the look at the glue here you can see where it goes right near that transistor there it goes all around through here look how black that stuff is definitely got hot yeah this thing got really hot and of course there's a fan which um, seized up well, I mean it's not doing too well <laughs> so basically the fan is what killed this thing fan seized up and overheated almost every capacitor there is bulging most of them are bulging now I'm trying to see here if there was some sort of failure it's kind of hard to tell yeah this thing here is a epic fail now the funny thing here is um, with most power supplies I mean the cheap ones the PCBs don't look all that good. This one here actually has a good quality PCB. It's, I mean, the PCB is actually good quality. It's just the components on that are bad. And we and we know the manufacturer of this thing. Palsun. Right over there is their website, which I mean, we may go visit in this video. <laughs> look at the size of that transformer. We Isn't that bad? Look how tiny the thing is. I mean, this honestly looks like some unit that would <laughs> power, I don't know, something like really small, maybe 90 watts. Yeah, pretty, pretty bad. Aha, I think we found what failed. There's like corrosion on it. See the device to the far right, well not the far right. It is right there in the corner. See the green stuff on it? 
Looks like the same kind of corrosion you get on batteries. Look at that. I'm trying to tell if it's something that failed or not. But I can tell you that it, whatever it was, it got really hot. I mean, all the glue on this thing is like totally black. And I'm definitely not going to apply power to this thing and see what it does. Nope, not going to do that. Now let's see what the rating of these caps are. They say they're 330 microfarads, but I, I seriously doubt that. I mean, <laughs> look how small they are. They're not big at all. This one has a four diode treatment, but at least those diodes look half decent. They also look a little bigger than the ones in that Chief Max I just put in the TV box. The heat sinks in this thing look like something you would find in probably like a laptop AC adapter or something like that. I mean, <laughs> look at them. I mean, this is crazy. I mean, the, the puny size of this thing. <laughs> but one thing that surprises me, though, is it appears to possibly have an IC regulated 5 volt standby rail. I see a little IC there, but I don't see a second small transistor on this first heat sink there. This thing has a ha, um, has only one itty bitty transistor in charge of doing the primary switching. That Chief Max I was putting the TV box had two 13009s working together, which I think is good for about 300 watts. Not the 450 watts I was rated for, but plenty enough for its application in the TV box. Now guys, look at that spot over there, next to the transformer. See how black that is? It's like tape, but it looks really black. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this thing here is really a piece of junk. Yeah, um... <laughs> I mean, I see two... What appear to be possibly, um... Either, um... DC to DC conversion pieces or their, um, rectifiers that aren't even attached to heat sinks. There's three in there that are, but two that two devices that are not. And I can't really see the the, um, the numbers on them, so I can't really see it tell you a data sheet, but anyways, we get the idea. Some power some cheap power supplies can be fixed by improving the EMI filtering and by installing better caps but this one here <laughs> I mean installing better caps that ain't gonna do you much there's no spots on this PCB here to even install like a long coil or nothing like that it was probably intended to be used with a daughter board on the AC plug that has that kind of stuff but anyways this thing here is <laughs> I'm not going to bother fixing it because obviously thing here is really a piece of crap. I'm not even going to waste my time with it. But I, want, I did want to show it to you guys. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Here's a couple more things I want to show you. They are so cheap they can only use two screws in the design of this thing to hold the PCB in the case. And they got these like um, ledges here that the PCB sits on to hold it in the back side. But a screw here and a screw here. And I know something else that I'm not really liking. You see that um, switch there for the voltage selection? Look where they have the wire soldered. It's not on the top, it's in the bottom. So yeah, let's go ahead and take the PCB out. I mean, this thing is sending um, part of a voltage, voltage doubler circuit <laughs> around to the bottom side of the PCB. Risking shorting out, you know, shorting to ground. Not a very good design, in my opinion. And something else? Uh, oh, yeah, there's a fuse there. It's a, it's a little bitty one. I was almost wondering if the thing even had a fuse. Let's say bother to zip tie the wires to the case. I don't know why they bothered doing that. They skimped on pretty much everything else. It's 
funny. This thing here makes that Chief Max out as <laughs> installed in the TV box look like something of high quality. I'm going to snip a few more wires because it's safe to say this thing ain't going back into a computer. <laughs> Definitely safe to say that. Snip one more wire over here. And one more wire over here. Let's snip the fan wires. I'm not even gonna bother saving the fan either. You know it's funny, usually in these cheap power supplies I'll at least save the fan. <laughs> but even the fan in this one is terrible. Yep, <laughs> there you go. See it, see where they got the um Got those wires soldered in. Isn't that great? That's lovely engineering right there, guys. And guess what else? Not only they had those wires soldered to the bottom side of the PCB, there was absolutely no sort of um, plastic on the bottom of the case to go between the PCB and the metal. Yeah. Anyways, have a look at what appears to be an oversized laptop power adapter. <laughs> I mean, look at this thing. Now that right there just makes me mad. The fact that they want to slack that bad on the design. I mean, seriously. They could they they had to do that bad of a build on this thing. So I guess we can get you a good close up of the PCB now it's out of the case. Get you a good macro focus and get you a good look at this thing. I think it does actually have a um, IC uh, controlled 5 volt standby rail. That's probably the only positive I can say about this thing. A lot of, a lot of cheaper in power supplies have two transistor 5 volt standby rails, and generally they don't have I mean some of them. And some power supplies are known for those to fail, such as the Best Tech ATX 25012E. But I've seen a lot of power supplies with those kinds of designs last for many years and not fry any motherboards or nothing like that. There are some bulging caps. Hmm. Yep. Epic fail of a design. Now let's go and visit that site there, palsun.com. Look okay, everybody, here's a look at Palsun's website. And it's all in Chinese. Yep, Chinese. And notice I'm seeing a lot of uh, what appear to be laptop adapters. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. Look at that thing down there. Let's go and translate the page. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Yeah, this is on a different website, and I'll go ahead and translate it. Total search zero. <laughs> I don't think I want to buy a power supply from that company. It's funny, usually these OEMs, you can't find much of anything about them. It's because they they sell their products, or at least um, other companies buy them and rebrand them as these cheap things like what you just seen. So anyways, that was a look at the website. 
Now I guess we can end this video by look at the connectors it has. And man, they have some skinny wires on them. I mean, look at this CPU power connector. I'm not sure if that's 18 gauge or possibly 20 gauge. And of course, these wires aren't labeled because they don't want you to know the wire gauge. No. Uh-oh. They don't want you to know that. Because really, they're supposed to be 18 gauge. Let me see here. Those 3.3 volt wires might be 18 gauge. I mean, I'm, yeah. But I kind of had my doubts. I mean, look how skinny these wires going to the CPU connector are. Look how skinny they are. We got to look at these. And we have a total of two SATA connectors on this thing. Along with two Molex and one floppy. Along with your main power connector, I mean your main power connector there and your CPU power connector here. One more look at the specs here and what it says it can do. You yeah, see the empty spot there? That's probably where um, the minus 5 volt reddings would have normally went. And let's see if it does. It does not have the minus 5 volt rail. There's a um, empty spot in the plug. So at least many of these cheap power supplies are starting to get a little bit more modern by not having minus 5 volt rails. Yeah. This thing here has no use in the a computer. Unless you want to fry something. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this power supply video. Any questions or comments? Feel free to ask and thanks for watching.